the Lord wants, we're in Perki Avod, uh, the second parak, Mishnah 13, by our account. And this is a continuation of the previous Mishnah, right, where we saw Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai's five Talmidim, his five students, had uh, in, each had three teachings. So on this week, we're on Rabbi Yoshua. So it says, Rabbi Yoshua Omer, Ein hara, beyetzer hara, v'sinat habriot, motzin et ha'adam min ha'olam. Rabbi Joshua said, an evil eye, the evil inclination, and a sinat abayot, we'll leave that untranslated for now, put or take a person out of the world. So what does this mean? So on a Pashat level, says the Bartanura, with regards to Ayin Hara, so that means perspective on material possessions, right? In terms of it could either be our own material possessions or somebody else's. If it's our own, what happens? We see our, we see our lot and, you know, we're not so pleased. It's like, my car could be newer. My house could be bigger, it could be in a bigger area, you know, my job, my possessions, the food I eat, how often I go out, that, you know, that could really displace someone and kind of make them lose perspective on everything that they do have, and therefore takes them out of the world. Alternatively, um, says the Bartimur, it can actually be, be more external, that is to say, we are putting an eye on Hara on somebody else, on someone else's wealth, on someone else's children. On someone else's anything, and in, by doing that, you cause them harm. That's why it's an ayin hara, right? You've, it's not only just looking at them in an evil way, that actually does cause damage. Um, that spiritual energy can actually damage other people. That's at least the first one, the Pashti. But the Yachin and the Levanon um, articulate the same idea that we saw in the previous Mishnah. That is, that these are connected the three. Um, types of relationship a person can have. That is to say, a relationship with God, a relationship with other people, and a relationship with oneself. So going through it, I say, what's an ayin hara? So both the yachin and the yin the one say, an ayin hara is on divrei Torah and divrei chachamim. Right, the way, you, there's, a, there's, there's a way to hear a jar Torah, and there's a way to ask a question, right? It's not because, just because you hear a shir, doesn't mean you have to be like, oh, okay, no questions. I don't exactly understand it, or this seems a little... Uh, contra self-contradictory or contradicts another Torah principle I've heard and just don't ask questions, that's, that's not what we're talking about. A person should cer certainly ask questions, um, but there are questions and then there are questions, right? If there's uh, um, questions to destroy and then questions to build and discover and to learn. And talking about the Anayin Hara is when you just hear a Torah, Torah and you start, you know, you know those people, I think we've all seeing them around, and they're not really asking to find out the answer, they're asking to cause trouble, or try to make themselves seem, seem clever. Um, and actually, this week's parsha is a perfect example of that. Korach famously asked Moshe uh, a question. It's brought down in Rashi um, that he was saying to, he had all 250 people dress up in a tchelet, and he said, does a piece of clothing with tchelet need to have tzitzit? Moshe said yes. And so they mocked him. They mocked, Korach mocked Moshe and said, oh, you know, like, what are, you, are you really saying that? That, like, this whole, this whole beggar is full of tchelet, you still think it needs tzitzit? That's not a question that's looking to discover. That's an ayin hara, looking to kind of just disgrace and embarrass and, and cause problems. That's not what we're looking for. That's connected Torah. Um, how does it relate to the Yitzhara? Well, the Yitzhar is connected to the Avoda, right? Our relationship to Kadosh Baruch Hu. And says the Yitzhar beautifully, um, and this is kind of articulated in the Yachin too, that a person can actually have an Ayin Tov, right? You could hear the Divrei Torah and be Mechabel, this is, this is great, you know, asking clarifying questions, that's fantastic. But then a person's Yitzhar could kick in, and just again, just because we know something intellectually is true doesn't necessarily mean we've internalized that on an emotional level and act on that, uh, on that realization. And so we see that just because a person has intellectual ideas correct doesn't mean that their Yetzir Har isn't going to kick in and, and help them regress. And that's where we see another mission of Pirkei Avot, that in the Banu quote, which is, It's not teaching or learning that's the Iker, it's doing. And the Yetzir Har can, can, your knowledge is fully intact. Your, your Midrash, no problem. But the Ma said that's where the Yitzhahara comes in and puts us back. So those are those are the first two. What about Sinat Tamayot? And here we're going to shift to the Bar Janura because he gives three different Pirushim, one from Rashi, one from Rambam, 
and then something that he had heard, but they're all three completely different ways of looking at what does sinat abreot mean? Hating the people, hating other people, what does that mean? So his first one is, very simply, sinachinam. Sinachinam, right? Hatred for no good reason. Right? We can all invent reasons why we hate other people. You know, uh, the way Rav Bernstein articulates this concept is, if someone steals something that belongs to you, you're going to resent them. If someone steals something that does not belong to you, that you have no claim to, then okay, it's bad, but uh, you don't really care, right? You know, it's not something that really concerns you very much. What if someone steals something that is not yours, but that we think is is ours? Someone steals something that, that that's not mine, but I think it's mine. I have this impression that it is mine. I'm going to resent him for no good reason, because it's not mine, right? Or even if he hasn't stolen right, he just takes it, and we think it's ours, then we're going to resent him, and it's for no good reason. That's one idea uh, behind what sin is. There are other explanations, but we'll go with that for now. So just hating other people for no good reason. That's one. Says Rambam, no, it's a person who hates being around other people. He doesn't like their company. He's not interested in getting to know them. So he goes and he effectively secludes himself. He's in isolation on purpose. Right? It's not because of COVID quarantines. It's because he's like, I know that I could hang out with you. I don't like being around other people. So I don't want to be with you or anybody else for that matter. So I'm going to go and seclude myself and be on my own. That's a terrible thing says this Mishnah. And then finally, the, the Barsanura quotes the Rambam. That's how Rambam understands it. And then finally, the Barsanura says, um, Vanishamati, I heard, Adam Kashe, a difficult person, Shemithi Alav Sinat who makes who, who brings upon him hatred from other people. And he causes other people to hate him. Wow! You see this Mishnah, the Sinat it, you, we would, I think, would instinctively understand this to mean hating other people, but says the Barcelona, no, I heard that Sinat Tabayot means when other people hate you, you cause people to hate you, you cause their Sina to be provoked. Well, Sina Tadam in Olam, that literally takes a person out of this world. So that's, uh, that's amazing. I'm just going to reiterate, that's my favorite part of the Mishnah, is uh, it's just that last three, just so good. Sinat Tabayot, hating other people for no good reason. Sinat Tabayot, it's secluding yourself from other people because you just don't like being around them. You're just not interested. Alternatively, it's being such a difficult person, so such a hard person to deal with, so unpleasant that you cause, cause other people to hate you. Um, those are the, uh, the explanations we'll go with, and we'll leave it there this week.